Romans chapter 11, verses 25 to 36. It's entitled here, All Israel Will Be Saved. I do not want you to be ignorant of this mystery, brothers, so that you may not be conceited. Israel has experienced a hardening in part until the full number of the Gentiles has come in. And so all Israel will be saved as it is written. The deliverer will come from Zion. He will turn godlessness away from Jacob. And this is my covenant with them when I take away their sins. As far as the gospel is concerned, they are enemies on your account. But as far as election is concerned, they are loved on account of the patriarchs. For God's gifts and his call are irrevocable, just as you were, who were at one time disobedient to God have now received mercy as a result of their disobedience. So they too have now become disobedient in order that they too may now receive mercy as a result of God's mercy to you. For God has bound all men over to disobedience so that he may have mercy on them all. Oh, the depth of the riches of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable his judgments and his paths beyond tra tracing out. Who has known the mind of the Lord? Or who has been his counsellor? Who has ever given to God that God should repay him? From him and through him and to him are all things. To him be the glory forever. Amen and amen. They're all switched on, yes. Thank you, David, for the way you led the... Um, I've never been so... Uh, uh, notice is done so prayerfully. Wasn't it awesome? <laughs> you know, I just sort of just about want to burst into a full prayer meeting, you know, after every notice. So, you know, like we're told to pray continually. And that, in a sense, isn't it wonderful to be able to just pray, you know, just talk and then pray and talk and our whole life should be a prayer, shouldn't it? It really should be. And what a joy it is for Jenny and I to be here today. It's a real, oh, goodness me, I didn't do this in the first service. But anyway, um, <laughs> not that there's any difference in the first service, but uh, um, yeah, it was just, just a real joy to be here. We've got so many friends in this church. I mean, I just look out and, and it's just amazing. It was a very special time. We are here most of the 90s and uh, boy, you know, like what's Christianity all about? Love. God so loved us, you know. We love because he first loved us. You know, we have love in our hearts. It overflows to God and worship. It's a beautiful worship. And it overflows to one another. That's Christianity. Hallelujah. Can we pray together? And Father, I just want to ask that the fire of God will fall from heaven this morning. That Lord, you'll, uh, you'll uh, warm our hearts and our minds and you'll open our eyes to the amazing compassion and faithfulness that you have towards your children, that you have towards us, your precious blood-bought sons and daughters. Father, we thank you that we are precious to you. But Lord, the focus this morning is your love for Israel. God, we thank you that you love Israel. You loved Israel and you still do with the same intensity, with the same passion. God, would you open our eyes that we might also learn to love, support and pray for Israel and your chosen people. We ask this in Jesus' name. God, would you help me this morning to uh, inspire us all to uh, see afresh your amazing great love for your people. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you for the reading. Um, yeah, that's, uh, 
you know, it, it finished off with a bit of a doxology at the end of it and it said God's ways are beyond finding out and I'm going to attempt to preach on God's ways that are beyond finding out. I'll tell you what, it's a bit hard to preach on Israel in 30 minutes because it would take all day and a whole lifetime to talk about how amazing God's plans and purposes are for Israel and for His church. Now, did you notice I said for Israel and for His church? I said, for his church and for Israel. Now, sadly, for the last 2,000 years, the church has mistakenly preached and taught pretty well the majority of the church, and it goes along with amillennialism, and most people probably don't know what that is, but don't worry. Basically, they've taught that at a given point in time, the Jews blew it. They were rebellious. They didn't do anything that God said. So he decided, plan B, I'm going to do it with the church instead. Does anyone believe that here this morning? Don't put your hand up, please. <laughs> you know, God has a plan and a purpose for Israel. Whole Old Testament tells us what it is. Who knows that the promises God made to Israel are irrevocable. Boy, that word's getting well hammered this morning. Irrevocable, for those who don't know what it is, do you use irrevocable in general language? Not generally today. It means he does not change his mind. When God says something, he sticks to it. And when God makes promises that are eternal, they will remain that way. So let's begin. There's a story about a, 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 a King Frederick the Great, he was king of Prussia in the mid-1700s, and he was trying to find out what life was all about, and he's asking all these questions. So he asked one of his senior advisors, he said, how do I know God exists? Just tell me how I can know God exists. And this man thought for a while, and he said, Your Honour, the Jews. Now, why would he have said the Jews? I believe he would have said the Jews because the Jews are a tangible expression of God's faithfulness to a people. Now, we all know as the church, as God's chosen sons and daughters, that God is faithful. Amen. When God promises something to us, he means it and he will stick by it. But we see a very graphic example of that in the Jewish people. Now, I wanna, um, I'm going to do a message today notes there we'll just have to get looked at now and then but um, I want to do it in sound bites because I believe it's really important that we really get it you know and I, I suppose uh, they say a good message should have a, a real sharp point what's my point today I believe we need to know beyond a shadow of doubt that God has plans and purposes for Israel and he wants the church to love support and pray for Israel. Do I hear an amen out there? Does anyone agree with that? I believe that God wants Maharangi Church to be blessed, really blessed. The best way you can receive the blessing of God is to get on His page. Amen. When you get on His page, you support what He supports. You love what He loves. And He loves Israel. He always did and he always will. And he's got plans and we'll see that as we go, that God has a, a revival, Ezekiel 37 plan for Israel that's going to shake this planet. There's going to be a revival in Israel that will eclipse every great revival that's ever happened on this planet. We are going to see the eyes of the Jewish people opened that they might see their Messiah. Yeah. Woo! They've been blind all these years. And did you know Romans 9, 10 and 11 tells us exactly that. It actually tells the church, I don't want you to be ignorant of this mystery. God has revealed what the mystery is. And he said, I want the church to be informed. Better word than ignorant, isn't it? We don't want to be called ignorant. But to be informed, we are we, we know what God has planned for his chosen people. And he has planned an amazing end time revival once the full number of Gentiles have been saved. 
So we are now in what the Bible calls the time of the Gentiles. The gospel through Apostle Paul is going out to all the, the, the Gentile nations in the world. And, um, and after that time, there'll be a time it'll finish. Then God says he's going to revive the, the people of Israel. Oh, isn't that exciting? Isn't that exciting? So a massive thing we need to understand, there are two people groups in this world. There are clearly many nations, and we all know that. We know there's all sorts of um, you know, Kiwis and Aussies and Australia, you know, Australians and Aussies and, and Germans. But essentially, biblically speaking, there are Gentiles and there are Jews. Jews have a very, very specific calling in life. Uh, I think if you're a Jew here today, you'd probably put your hand up and say, I wish I wasn't a Jew. Because they have suffered and have been more misunderstood than any people group on this planet. They have been persecuted mercilessly. And if you want to uh, do a little study that will bring you to tears, just look at the last 2,000 years and beyond of the utter, um, you know, the persecution and the treatment of the Jewish people in history. It is absolutely awful. And I want to make another point that Derek Prince makes very well, and he's got all the data. As I say, this is sound bites today, so you can do your research after I've finished. But basically, there are um, it, when you read in the Bible the word Israel, it means Israel. It means that tiny bit of land in the Middle East. It means Israel. And if you read Israelite, it is the Jewish people. It is not the church. The church is the church and Israel is Israel. So sadly, uh, many people have read the Old Testament and because God's finished with Israel, they replace church for Israel. And all the promises in the Old Testament are now for the church where they're not. They're still for Israel. Hallelujah. You know, huge ignorance. I was at a party the other night and uh, the other day and I met a guy and he was talking. He was really bagging Israel. Lovely Christian man. And, and he was in this uninformed or ignorant position because he's saying, oh, I don't know, my gut feeling is that Israel's just, they're just so wrong. And did you know that the United Nations spends more time talking about Israel than any other nation in the world? I mean, excuse me. Israel's the tiniest country in the world and they're trying to defend themselves from hostile neighbours all around them who continually send rockets in, like thousands of them, and every now and then they send one back and do a lot of damage and they're criminals. You know, this is what we're talking about. You know, you don't listen to the media when it comes to Israel. That's for sure. You know, and anyway, I, I put this... Uh, man right. As you can see, I'm quite passionate about this topic. So he wished he hadn't, actually he did wish he'd, uh, he was thankful because later he came back to me and he said, David, thank you so much for telling me what you did because I think I'll do some more research. <laughs> you know, that was a joy, a real joy. You know, Romans 11 is a very powerful, in fact, if you want to understand God's plans and purposes for Israel, you read Romans 9, 10 and 11. I just repeat that again. That is specific three chapters in the Bible that explain God's dealings with Israel because it is very confusing. What's happened to Israel? What's it all about? And Paul explains it and then ends by saying, I don't want you to be ignorant of this mystery. It looks bad for Israel, but I've got it sorted. I've got it sorted, as we said before. Okay, in the church, you can um, do some um, thinking now what category you're in. There are three categories of Christians, broadly speaking. There are those Christians who embrace all that God has finished with the church stuff, which we've already talked about. I've had some amazing experiences as a pastor. I uh, have made a point of preaching because of my love for Israel on this topic. I've done it. I don't often do it, but I do a series through those three chapters. And I have had people get up out of the church and walk out uh, 
saying non-sort of Christian words <laughs> because they're so upset that anyone would have the audacity to say that the Jews are God's chosen people. You know, this is what we're dealing with. Anti-Semitism is a very evil, 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 evil thing. And I uh, am doing sound bites and being dramatic because it is that important that we understand we need to be the opposite. We need to be shouting it from the rooftops that God loves Israel. God is not finished with Israel. And he's got a beautiful revival planned for his precious, precious chosen people. So that's the, 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 the replacement theology group. I'm glad there is no one here in that camp because I can see every heart and I can see, no, not that one, especially after the way you've been going on. Anyway, the second one is those who love Israel passionately. Now, I need to just give a little warning here. Some of these people go weird. <laughs> Don't go weird. If you're a Gentile, be proud that you're a Gentile. Don't try and be a Jew. Jews are Jews, Gentiles are Gentiles, and we're both loved equally by God. Did you get that recorded? <laughs> Hallelujah. The whole point is they are, have a specific, specific plan. You know, we have to be very careful that we don't start going back to all the Jewish laws and running around with talets and kippers on and all sorts of things. If you're a Jewish person, that would be totally appropriate. But I don't believe God wants to turn the church into, you know, a Jewish type of thing, meeting on Saturday and all that sort of stuff. So we have to be very careful. I just want to read a few scriptures here that, that show that God has always um, loved Israel and had a calling on it. And these people who love Israel know these things. They know how important it is. Genesis 12, 2 to 3 is one of the most pivotal verses in terms of the beginning of Israel and God's plans. And you will see from a lot of these things, they're all eternal. They're forever. I will make you, said God to Abraham, into a great nation, Israel, and I will bless you. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. Maharangi Prezi Church, I will bless those who bless you. Hallelujah. And you and those who curse you will I curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. That's speaking to, eight, to Israel. What a blessing Israel's been to us as Christians. The Messiah. The, the, all the wonderful history and heritage. We're grafted in to a great family. All the patriarchs are now ours. Yeah. Deuteronomy 7 verse 6. This is God speaking to Israel and telling them. Now it's very interesting. It's exactly just about word for word what uh, God said in 1 Peter to the church. We are his chosen people a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people who belong to God. Anyone in that category this morning? Are you a chosen child of the living God? God said that exactly same thing to Israel. For you are a people holy, set apart to the Lord your God. The Lord has chosen you out of all the peoples on the face of the earth to be his people. And listen to this, his treasured possession. Whoa, God's treasured possession. Now, I don't, don't know about you, but I don't throw out treasured possession, nor does God. You know, Israel in the Bible is described as God's firstborn. Exodus 4.22 tells us that. And it also describes Israel as the apple of God's eye. Very interesting that our eye is one of the most sensitive parts of our body. If you have anything come close to your eye, you'll instinctively go back. That's how serious God will take it if anyone tempers with his God chosen children. You will look in history, every nation that's tried to take on Israel, they either don't exist today or they're not in a good state today. You don't temper with God's beloved. Hallelujah. Where is it? Can a mother forget the baby at her breast 
and have no compassion on the baby she has born. So he's comparing Israel like to a mother's baby. It's his own baby, his firstborn. He said, though she may forget you, I never will. That's that irrevocable promise of God to his chosen people, Israel. God has made uh, promises to Israel that he will keep. I just, I didn't read this out in the first service, but this is awesome. Where is it? Okay. If anyone here today has any doubt about what I'm saying now, this is God's, I, I heard um, Catherine Coleman, do you know Catherine Coleman? Oh, what an amazing woman. She's pretty weird, but I mean, she's amazing. Anyway, she was preaching on Israel. I thought, whoa, she loves Israel too. How awesome is that? And she had her Bible and she said, the word of God is ir irrevocable. Um, what are all the words for the Bible? You know, all those things. That, in other words, it's the truth. God loves Israel. That was Catherine Coleman. Whoa, that's good. Um, this is what the Lord says. He who appoints the sun to shine by day, who decrees the moon and stars to shine by night, who stirs up the sea so that its waves roar, the Lord Almighty is his name. Only if these decrees vanish from my sight, declares the Lord, will the descendants of Israel ever, ever cease to be a nation before me. Whoa, did you get that? Man, I just got it again. Well, he must know we're slow of hearing because he said it again. This is what the Lord says, he should say again. Only if the heavens above can be measured and the foundations of the earth below be searched out, will I reject the descendants of Israel because of all they have done. Wow. So now he's saying, yeah, you'll probably discover my people will be quite rebellious. But I will never, ever, as long as the sun comes up and the stars shine and the moon shines, I will never reject my chosen people, ever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that's the next group. Who's in that group? Yay! Both hands. Not too many here. You need to learn to stand up for Israel. Hallelujah. You know, um, there's a third group, and, and I'm not even going to say much about the third group. They just don't get it. They just don't get it. They say, what's all this? You know, when someone says to me, I love Jewish people, but I don't get all this stuff about Israel. I go, because you're ignorant. You don't understand the amazing plans and purposes and promise God has for his chosen people. So just a, how are we going? Oh my goodness. So my personal journey, I'll just share a little bit of testimony um, where my passion came from. When I was about 25, I started thinking about you know, what's life all about? And I started looking at all the, the different things you do at that time. Eric von Daniken, of course, we all try them out, flying saucers. And, you know, did we come from flying saucers? Did we, you know, I became a vegetarian, or Jenny did that to me. She, she was searching and she thought vegetarianism was the answer. And I moved to Walkworth and got into the meat again. That was good. And um, anyway, we tried all sorts of things. And then I discovered some books about Israel. And I read about all the, the wars in Israel. Israel, the, 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 the 1948 war, when Israel declared independence, or they declared uh, Israel as a nation, all the nations around Israel attacked them. All of them. And Israel, pretty well, slightly embellished, with pitchforks, fought them and won. Now, who, how do you think they did that? God. God did it. Hallelujah. Let's give him a hand this morning because our God is a great God. He's a powerful God. He's a mighty God. Is anything too hard for our God? Nothing, absolutely nothing. Then I read about the 67 war, the six day war as it's called and how the Jews won back the Temple Mount and, and they gave it back to them. Why did they do that? Well, they're generous, the Jewish people. Obviously, there's the most sacred site. And of course, it's a very source of great Frustration today to everybody. And then the 73 Yom Kippur War. Anyway, at the end of this, I decided I'm going to be a Jew. 
because God's with these people. I decided as a total, complete non-Christian who didn't go to church or had any interest in church, I decided I'd be a Jew. And then I discovered I didn't have a Jewish mother. This was going to be very hard for me. <laughs> and I can't be born again a Jew. You know, I hadn't worked out how I could do that, but I could become born again by the spirit of the living God. And I became a child of God, grafted into Israel, grafted in, part of God's eternal family, glory to his precious holy name. I had such a conversion experience that I will never, ever forget the day God met Jenny and I, knelt on the floor and titterangy back in those days. I, we had an experience with God which was just life-changing. And uh, God delivered me and Jenny, or mainly myself in terms of addictions and all sorts of things, and God miraculously completely changed my life, changed our life. And if you're here today and you don't know Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Saviour, the Good Shepherd, the one who will reach out to us and love us and care for us, and he's faithful. He's faithful no matter what we go through, no matter what, oh my goodness, if anybody had told me my life would turn out the way it would, I would have stopped immediately. I, I can't, wouldn't even go through some of the trials we've had over the years. And I thought that everything was going to be rosy. You know, everything was just going to be wonderful. And I tell you what, God has never failed me once. I preached for 10 years and uh, I hadn't preached too much before except the time the youth group did a little bit and uh, I can honestly say that for 10 years I preached nearly every Sunday and God never failed to give me a message and I knew it was from him. So be encouraged. God is with us. God is with us. He will never leave us. Never, never leave us or forsake us. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Um, Back to Romans 11. You know, what are the big sound bites from this morning? What are we to take from this? Well, number one, we need to totally know beyond any shadow of doubt that God has not rejected Israel. Amen, amen, and amen. He has not rejected them, not as converted Christians. They need Jesus but he has not rejected all the plans and promises he has made to them in the Old Testament. And he said that a remnant will be saved, and hence in our reading the set it says, and then when this revival comes, all Israel will be saved. It won't be every single Jew. We need to understand that. It will be the remnant or the chosen Jewish people. And only God knows who they are. Hallelujah. In verse 1, God says, has God, in chapter 11, verse 1, God, has God rejected his people? And everyone said, no. no. King James says, God forbid. Secondly, Israel has not fallen beyond recovery. In other words, because of their rebellion and sin and all their failings, God has not forsaken them. Just like he won't forsake you and me. Hallelujah. That's good news. And again I ask, says Paul, again, did they stumble so as to fall beyond recovery, the Jewish people? God forbid. It certainly may look like it in Israel. Most of the Jews and the Israelites, it's probably one of the most secular nations in the world currently. But it's not going to stay that way. It's not going to stay that way. Romans 11 tells us clearly that God has blinded the eyes of his people while the gospel goes out to the Gentiles. Now, during this time, Many Jews are turning to Jesus. We have the Messianic Church. So you will know of Jewish people who are Keith Green, Jewish. Um, lots and lots of names I could bring who have been marvellously saved. But the bulk of Israel remains in unbelief. And the Bible says God has blinded their eyes. We need to understand that so we don't get proud. 
so the church doesn't um, get arrogant and God wants us to know that but then he promises in verse 26 the deliverer will come from Zion and he will turn godlessness away from Jacob which is Israel and this is my covenant with them when I take away their sins and then it says all Israel will be saved whoa what a day that's going to be hallelujah I just want to declare today that uh, Israel has always been, is right now and always be in the centre of God's plans and purposes. I so often say to people who aren't interested in Christianity, okay then you just watch Israel. You'll see God working. I just mark my words for it. I hope I'm right then. <laughs> <laughs> the Messiah was born in Israel. The Messiah was crucified in Israel. The Messiah rose from the dead, hallelujah, in Israel. And uh, all the disciples were Jewish. Paul was Jewish. The gospel that we love is so Jewish. We should not despise the Jewishness of our faith. But as we said before, we don't need to become Jewish. Jesus Christ one day is returning. And he's returning, Zechariah tells us, to the Mount of Olives in where? Israel. Now, I know if you're a millennial, you won't believe that, but that's okay. If he arrives on Mount Zion, uh, sorry, on um, the Mount of Olives, you'll be, I'm sure, the first to admit you're wrong. But, and I'll admit I'm wrong if he doesn't. Amen? It doesn't really matter, in a sense, in the big picture but I believe the word. I believe what the Bible says. Zechariah tells me that our Messiah, our Saviour is coming back and he's coming back to Jerusalem to rule and reign for a thousand years. Hallelujah. And he's going to reign as King of Kings and Lord of Lords and all his glory and all his power. You know, some people go, oh, I can't imagine Jesus being back on the earth. It's just all too weird. I go, he has been here once. And he did walk around. The greatest joy for me, and I know so many here, was going to Israel. Oh, walking on that holy terrain. I just felt the Bible. The whole Bible just came to life. And, and, uh, and I believe that we're uh, close to the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. And he's going to come to his chosen Jewish sons and daughters. And they're going to say, blessed, blessed are you, Lord God Almighty. There's going to be the most amazing um, revival as God takes the scales off the Jewish people's eyes and they see the one who they have pierced. And they realise, we've been wrong 2,000 years. And the suffering and the pain they went through, and it was, as we read in Romans 9, 10, 11, all part of God's unbelievable, unsearchable, unknowable plan. We can't. We're not God. But we do know what God's asked us to do. Love, support, and pray for Israel. Let's pray. God, we're overwhelmed. God, your spirit is here, moving amongst us. And we're so grateful for that. God, where your spirit is, is liberty and life. And we thank you that there's life in the truth as well. You are the way. You are the truth. You are the, the way, the truth, and the life, Lord Jesus. And we honour you today. And we thank you for this amazing plan you have for Israel. God, would you bless the Jewish people? Would you bless the nation of Israel? We pray together, Lord, as the church. God, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We pray that you would bless your people, your chosen, anointed people. Father, would you uh, help the church to not be ignorant? We're speaking about the church in New Zealand and worldwide. God, would you help us to know the truth that we 
may be able to pray with passion for Israel. God, would you bless this church as they serve you in these coming days. We thank you for the work you're doing here. And I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for the time we were part of this church as well and for the precious people that we've grown to love so dearly. We ask this, all these things, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.